Okay, good day everyone. At least I hope you're having a good day. Um, I'm just going to get right into this. As you can see, the um, rear axle is bolted in. Now, I'm going to sort of go over why I redid the purchase from the last two videos I made. Um, first of all, you got to realize these 8.8s are actually narrower than the 8 and a quarter, and also the pumpkin you see there is offset to the passenger side. So if you actually measure from the backing plate of that brake to where the tube goes into the axle housing and do the same thing over here, you'll see that the driver's side axle is actually longer. I believe it, yeah, it's longer on the driver's side. I don't know why Ford offsets the pumpkin just that much, but they do. Okay, the issue I ran into going off of the directions from, what was it, Iron Rock Off-Road, is I set the perches, the perches under here, that the leaf spring bolts onto, the same uh, distance away from the backing plate on both sides. Now what that did when I was putting it on the first time was when... I bolted it on. Literally, these leaf springs. Put a light on. If this light will work. Oh, the switch is so bad. Okay, there's some light. These leaf springs, I literally had to push inward to the pumpkin. Like, literally, grab a ratchet strap and go from this leaf spring to that leaf spring and pull them together to get them on these perches in the hole that they need to be into on the perches to line up everything in. That wasn't right. And when you look back from the leaf spring, it's not now, you could see the leaf spring was like this. That wasn't correct either. And same on this side. This leaf spring on the passenger side would have been like this. So they were bowed in as well as the uh, driver's side tire, when I had it on like this, was too far out from the body compared to the driver's side tire on the body. And I did a quick measurement between this inside frame rail to the outside of the tire, just for comparison's sake. If I remember correctly when I measured it, when it was screwed up, is this side was a full inch that way compared to the passenger side which was a full inch closer now that is way far off on top of when I first per uh, first per uh, first put the weld on the perches it was way too close to this um, truss on this side to where I couldn't get this on it and this on at the same time so I had to cut it. That was the first like red flag for me. Okay, so after I figured it out, out and it was too far that way as well as when I put it in here going around the front here with the stock exhaust system in here you see how close the pinion is already to the stock exhaust. It was basically almost dead nuts touching it. So it was not correct at all. So now that I have it in there pretty much correct as good as it's going to get, the tires for the body are pretty much the same now they both stick out the same amount and I did that quick measurement again between the frame rail here or the unibody to the tire and they're both about six and a half inches away from the tire the driver's side's a bit more but it's like an eighth of an inch more it's very very small you can't really tell by your naked eye unless you actually did anal measurement actually we're actually like super picky about it but it's not that far off now and as well as 
I don't have the leaf springs bowed in that way to get the axle in. So let's talk about the measurements. So if you go to the actual instructions here, when you go through the actual instructions, this first page is about like measuring your donor axle and where you can get a donor axle. Basically they're just telling you, they want you to measure this stuff, but a lot of people don't have this measuring tools. I don't either. Basically don't get an axle out of a wrecked vehicle. It's basically what I got out of that. But coming to the measurements here on the second page is I have my axle at 10 degrees stock. It's I don't have a problem with that. Um, basically as you see it here it's at 10 degrees, is at 0 degrees moving the perches. They want you to weld the perches 3 and 11 sixteenths from the backing plate over the brakes mount to to the perch. Now that is correct on the driver's side but not on the passenger side. When I did this I uh it was it looked good on the driver's side but the passenger side is not the same. Now the shock mounts I did weld on are six and a half inches from the uh, brake backing plate on both sides, driver and passenger, and that seems to be just fine. It was the perches. So here I kind of like did a little drawing. So the perch on the driver's side is a three and eleven sixteenths from the uh, bolt of the backing plate for the brakes on the driver's side, but it is a three and, and a quarter from the uh, backing plate on the passenger side. And that moved my axle one inch this way. Basically, I have the axle pretty well centered under the Jeep now. And the uh, the pinion is not as close to the exhaust, but still fairly close. But that's just because of the nature of the pumpkin being offset on the axle in Fords. So that is uh, one thing that you have to be aware of. But I'm going to put a drive shaft on here with this exhaust on here, just to see how close it comes. I might have to change out this muffler for how close it is right up here, but I will make a video on what drive shaft I'm going off of. And I'm going off of a uh, the hack and tap slip yoke I'll be doing on this, but that'll be a later video. Right now I'm just going over the mounting of the 8.8 in this Jeep. So that's that's pretty much it. Other than that, it is pretty centered. It is a good amount centered in the uh, drive shaft tunnel. It's a little off, like I said, but it's not as bad as it was, and I didn't have the leaf springs bowed in, being this is the passenger side. And it was a pain to get this axle in when the leaf spring was not exactly correct. It was a royal pain. Now, one thing to note, as I roll down over here, when I now this is now that this uh, passenger perch is three inches and a quarter from the backing plate this bolt I sorta of had to shave the head a little bit just so I could get the caliper in here and bolt it down the bolt was just a hair too long and I'm okay with that because you can still get this out you still bolt it with a wrench you just go up against the leaf spring and then you just slide the caliper out of there. That's uh, pretty much it for the mounting. Other than that, other than um, my mounting for the upper shock mounts are the uh, cheap, the cheapy way of going about it with the old sway bar connections on the old axle. But I instead of, I hate drilling and tapping, so I sort of half-ass welded these on here with a friend. 
Let's see how I, the, I'm, to be honest, they might just rip off for how much abuse this might go, this will probably go through, but we'll have to see. Same with that side. We'll just see how well they last. But that's my shock mount up there. But that is pretty much the mounting of this 8A in here. So, as it sits now, hopefully, I'm not pointing at too much, like, stupid stuff like the gas tank. But, it's now, the shock mounts on both sides, as this one's on this side, and the other one's on the front side of the axle, the passenger side. They are still the six and a half distance away from this backing plate bolting to the middle of the bolt hole here. They're still in their spot, perfectly straight up and down to the 10 degrees and the perches being straight, perfectly sh flat by the directions. The only thing mine was changed with was on this side, this perch is three and a quarter away from this backing plate. Do you get the axle basically perfectly just about perfectly centered under the Jeep and the pinion is not too far offset from the trans tunnel so by looking out from the back and the tires sticking out they are pretty centered and under here it's not terribly off but that's just the nature of the 8.8 so I'm going to quickly go over the brakes situation that I'm going over or doing right now um, this is the brake line that I got with my lift kit. This brake line is a stainless steel brake line. And then this kit I got from East Coast Gear Supply, from where I got my front axle from. I think this was like 70 bucks. That's also stainless steel line. It came with the line and everything you pretty much need to put it together. From what I can tell, and I believe so, is the lines in an Explorer are the same size lines as a uh, there is the brass washer same size lines as a uh, Jeep so they both have the same brake line size now if you don't want to go this route and go the cheap route the uh, cheapest way I believe you can do brake lines is to take two of these uh, I believe they're passenger side, rear passenger side brake lines for an actual Explorer with disc brakes. You get two of these and put them on both sides because the pa the driver's side one is that, but at this end it is a block just like that, but it has this line on it and then that line to go up to the vehicle and then you have one steel line going from the driver's side to the passenger side. That's the cheapest way I see of uh, doing that. That you just keep your this line. You get a short line and a long line and you get two of them passenger ones and you'll be good to go. But from what I can tell the uh, lines in the Explorer and lines in the uh, Cherokee are the same size. Now to quickly go over brake pressure, I a lot of people uh, I've seen do or forums and shit like that. A lot of them already uh, they reuse the uh, stock master cylinder and Jeep, and it does just fine. As well as um, a lot of them don't even change out the proportioning valve. That's basically where is it? Yeah, th this this block. Okay, I am not losing my mind. This block right here. This is the the like proportioning valve block, which right there. I believe this one goes to the rear brake. So right here is this uh, actual proportioning valve block. If you can see that. A lot of people leave this alone and are just fine with that. I don't know how it will react on the road. So what I did was went to the junkyard as I climb all over all this shit. 
And out of 97, I believe, ZJ that had disc brakes, I grabbed this. Now, I'm going to assume the lines are the same, but not totally sure. If all else fails, I will take the proportioning valve out of this and see if I can put it in that block over there. But I grabbed this out of a 97 ZJ that had disc brakes on the back just to get the proportioning valve. This, uh, this section right here. But we're going to see how well the drum brake proportioning valve functions with the disc brakes. Some people say they don't have a problem with it. Some people say if you have ABS, you absolutely don't need to worry about it because if you have working ABS, the ABS unit will take care of the skidding in the back. But we'll see how well it performs. But now I'm going to put brakes on the back, get the brakes all set, and you might s get another video back when I have the brakes all done, or I might just add on to the end of this one. I don't know what I'm going to do. But anyway, there's the update with the rear end and the issues I had, and now the measurements now. So if you want to do this, you can copy my measurements. Just be aware to do it correctly. You need to tack everything on, bolt it up in the vehicle, and do some measurements, make sure it's centered, and then take it back out and re-weld it. I tried to cheat, but it kind of bit me in the ass, so don't do what I do. You should really just tack it, check it, and then do whatever you need to do. If it's okay, good. If not, take it off and redo it again. But anyway, that was my 88 update. So, yeah, I'll see you next time.